Hello, my soccer universe. It's getting exciting. It's getting exciting uh, in many ways uh, in Austria. If you look at the results, you might think there's not nothing new, but actually the race for the top six spots is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And there are now four teams still vying for three spots. Yes, could be a little bit more exciting that they're like four teams for two spots, but still it is tight and there might be some upsets happening. Uh, and over in Germany, we now have the hoped for title duel between Dortmund and Bayern after Dortmund just refused to drop any points and keep winning and winning and winning and winning despite not always looking uh, that comfortable on the other side uh, they have the class and they get the results done and this is a really really good thing however it's on the bottom where I think the excitement is even bigger we have five teams within one point four teams on 19 points and Schalke to have two wins in a row. After not conceding goals, they suddenly start to win. And it's even more sweet because Thomas Reis, their current coach, got revenge over Bochum, where Bochum wanted to get revenge on him. So uh, there's quite some Ruhrpott power happening in the German Bundesliga at the moment. And the big question is, can those two teams meet their goals? Because for Schalke, it seems like they're absolutely done. They're going down. And now they have a real shot of surviving a relegation battle. And for Dortmund, we never were sure. Can they actually challenge Bayern? A Bayern team who also has been getting good results as, as of late. And we had three top clashes. And Bayern have been winning one of them uh, against Uni Berlin quite easily. Uh, but you never know what Bayern team goes shows, uh, shows up and it's a huge week for Bayern because they have to, of course, also weather the storm that is PSG, which might actually define their season as it will do for the Parisians. But we'll walk back to Austria uh, where we have only one round to talk about. And before that, we have now also the dates for the semi-final in the Austrian Cup, where on the Wednesday, 5th of April, so in a month from now, Rapid uh, host Ried and then a day later Sturm host Lask. With the final not being play played on the 1st of March, as is usual, but a day earlier. So, that we have the Sunday in. The results from the past weekend saw Lucerne lose to Sturm Graz. We had Hartberg beating Wolfsburg, which meant that Robin Dutt is ousted now by Wolfsburg, although it was kind of a mutual consent thing and both teams part uh, on good terms. And Ried also had fired their, their coach, but uh, still lose at home 3-1 to, uh, to Austria Wien and look very much in trouble. Austria Wien's win also meant that they solidified their spot in the upper playoff, although it's not a certainty yet. Klagenfurt get their must win against Altach, scoring all three goals in the first half. And then Tirol losing to Lusk means that Klagenfurt actually have not only a sh it might be a stretch to win against uh, to catch Austria Vienna, but actually they might catch Tirol now because Tirol have to uh, play Rapid and Sturm in the upcoming games. So uh, not the easiest schedule right there. And let's talk about uh, Tirol against Lusk. Uh, it was a game where maybe Tirol had the first chance. Lusk then completely controlled the uh, game left and right and a brilliant long ball from Horvath onto Mustafa lobs the goalie. 1-0 and he's uh, says that with multiple flip-flops and yes he started already last week and I think there is some game in him I really like what this Mustafa guy has been showing and then he also assists Nakamura who just wiggles and puts it in internet 2-0 fully deserved could have been more and I think this was I was looking at an easy afternoon but just before the half forced yes it was a bicycle kick with some touching the ground or, 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 or there, but just before the half, one, two. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, but you control the game so much, it should still be an easy win. Right after the half, Valentino Müller makes it 2-2, two, two, 46 minutes. It was not even a minute. And it was just the seconds before the half and the seconds after the half, where Lask completely scored a 2-0 lead, and then uh, Tirol could have even made it a 3-2. 
Fortunately, the referee uh, was not having a good day, like uh, alternate refer referees tend to do, unfortunately, these days. And since Bach off uh, with a second yellow card, it was a tactical foul. In that sense, I get it. But honestly, for the type of foul that was happening, I think this was a little bit rough. Honestly. However, it allowed Lars to go back. They had then an equal, uh, a chance to go ahead through Luke, Luke and it, and then a few more chances. And I thought, yeah, this is again one of those where they just will not get the win. They got the win. Nakamura gets the ball in the, in the box, plays it back to Jules, who is right neck neck next to him. Um, and Jules puts it over the line. It's, it's probably a key, uh, keeper Oswald. Saves it out behind the line. No goal line technology. In Austria, it was so clear over the line. The referee doesn't give it. The play actually goes on and a foul needs to be made by Lukaneda. To have it stop and then they look at the VAR and the goal is given. Uh, it is just, I would, uh, the yellow card was not necessary because the referee should see that frigging goal. Again, a late win for Lusk, another win. None of the wins that they got were that uh, convincing. However, wins they get. And it's a pretty good start with only a draw in a read that they actually should have lost uh, to. So, but I think overall Lusk looked, looks quite good. And now the big one is coming, but we'll talk about that in the second. Salzburg go to Rapid, take a very early lead. However, Rapid fight back and get an equalizer through Zimmermann just before the half. And then they had the big chance to take a lead with a great save from Köln from Salzburg. Uh, pull, pulling the hand out. And then Sheshko came on at the halftime for Okafor just runs riot. Yes, the first goal was probably a, a gift from the Rapid um, defense. But then every three minutes he scores. <laughs> gets a 3-1, gets makes a 4-1, gets a hat-trick within 7 minutes. And Burgstaller just pulls one back. It is 2-4. It was classic South because it was a game that was way tighter. Only in the last 10 minutes, it completely <laughs> separated the two, two sides. So yeah, Salzburg still, they are devastate, at their devastating best in a way. And you see it in the table. The first three are requalified for, for the next round. And then we have to really talk about the uh, scrap for the top spots. Tirol. A point ahead of Klagenfurt, but it's in, within touching distance. And Rapid and Austria Vienna are also not in the clear quite yet. So uh, there's quite some stuff happening. On the bottom, Hartberg with the big win. Not in last place and anymore. It's Reed now who are looking bad. And if you see here the expected standings in the rag race season, still the Tirol just ahead of Klagenfurt, but now it's Austria Vienna with the three point deduction that will make probably the top five and it's more or less between Tirol and Klagenfurt who will move on. As I said, the Tirol uh, program is not the easiest one. Um, as for the final standings, you know, it doesn't say more as Salzburg will become champion as then it's a scrap for uh, the, the other second and probably the fourth uh, for the other European spots, I would say, and who will get less there. On the bottom is still Hartberg, Alta, Reed, but uh, Reed looking now in trouble. Let's look at the upcoming games. Uh, they will, at the moment, they're still all played at the same time. And I would um, assume it will remain this way. Uh, you know, last round. We will be at Lask Salzburg, which is the big one. And of course, my girls have never seen Lask drop points. They only have seen Lask wins when they were in the stadium. This is not a big test. Will they see a win against Salzburg? That would be cool. But we have to look uh, at the other major, major games. We have Rapid win against Tirol. The, that's a head-to-head -head for qualification. And if Rapid win that one, they are definitely through. I think even a draw will see them through. Sturm Graz against Austria Wiener, Another big one. And Klagenfurt against Hartberg. So uh, all the battle... All the battles are right there. And then on the bottom, Alterkirk against Gernke Street. Yeah. Cool, awesome. It will not mean much because, uh, you know, we have the players and the points will be have, but there's a lot to play for. Moving over to the German Bundesliga. And again, I want to give the cup results, uh, the cup dates first. We see the uh, played 4th and 5th of April, Tuesday and Wednesday. Bayern, Freiburg and Frankfurt Union, probably the big uh, one then with Leipzig against Dortmund, a rematch from what we had before. Um, 
Going to the past weekend, um, a few remarkable starts. Uh, Julian Brandt scoring the winner at Hoffheim, although he did not intend to do it. He wanted to duck away from the ball, hits his back uh, and goes in because of that. Uh, a Wolf goal is then uh, disallowed. It was maybe a little bit more nervy for Dortmund than they wanted to have it, but win they did. Win also for Hertha and a surprise win for Wolfsburg at Köln. I didn't necessarily expect that. Gladbach, after the big win over Bayern, followed up with a 4-0 loss at Mainz. Go figure. Literally, go figure. Uh, I don't get Gladbach this season. Uh, I also don't quite get Frankfurt. Had a horrible first half. Yes, the first goal by Werner was kind of stumbled in. Emil Forsberg doubles the lead, but it was a deserved lead at the half. But then Frankfurt wake up. Get a goal back through, uh, through So. And then have multiple chances to actually equalize. Only in the last 15 minutes or so, Leipzig could make the game more level and maybe had, uh, ch had chances to decide it prematurely. Uh, Bochum are on a downhill turn. Bremen getting a win, which actually potentially means safety. And then Stuttgart, who have been really playing well. Also, similar to what Frankfurt did in uh, Leipzig, just find themselves 2-0 at the half. Schalke being the better team, and then Sosa pulls from back, but they cannot find the equalizer. Freiburg Leverkusen ends in an entertaining 1 1 draw, and then it was all about the big one between Bayern and Union Berlin. It was a top of the table clash because those two were right there. Same amount of points. No. Bayern, just look at them. The first had control of the game. It was also played in the snowstorm. Also very uh, telegenic snow in uh, Berlin. And then Chupa Moting scores one. Coman scores a second. Musiala adds a third just before the half. And that was the game. Uh, it was literally Bayern need to play for 15 minutes to uh, dispose of Union Berlin. And I think that means that the Union Berlin story for the championship is over still might go for the Champions League though, but I think this was a definitely um, a sign of things to come uh, that, you know, Bayern is so much better than Union Berlin, which we knew anyway, but we all wanted the story. On the past weekend, Dortmund against Leipzig was a showdown, a Rose going back to the team that fired him just after the summer. Uh, and definitely Leipzig needed something if they wanted to also go back into the title fight, whereas Dortmund wanted to stay in it, given that Bayern had a winnable game. So it was quite a big duel and reason enough for me to say, okay, um, it's good to wait another week because uh, we will know a whole lot more about the Bundesliga. Leipzig started well, but after 10 minutes, Dortmund took over and boy, were they good. I especially enjoyed the passes that Bellingham uh, were dishing out uh into the always over the top and onto the uh goal uh um julian brandt goal it was actually really nice not, not but the ball went to the hand but i think it hit him here so i'm not sure why they gave it a hand but okay the, but um, it was out it was already a good goal it was not given but then uh royce is brought down in the box it was a pretty clear penalty from my uh thinking or was it Brandt that was uh, and then Roy steps up, makes it 1-0. Uh, and then Leipzig were really struggling to get back in, 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 in the game. Uh, Dortmund doubled the lead with a shot from Emre Can that got deflected. Um, and it's 2-0, but this was that game was every bit 2-0 as it should be. Um, Henriks, I should in the second half, probably should have been uh, a sense in the sense of a really rough tackle. Um, but then Leipzig got themselves back into the game, forced by Pulsman back with 15 minutes to go. And Dortmund had just decided, okay, let's hang back and go on the counter-attack. The problem is they never got the counter-attack. And especially in the stoppage time, there were two huge saves. One by, Go uh, by Goal Goalie Maya late on, who had just come on. Um, you know, he's the reserve goalkeeper, uh, just had to prepare for, for, for the game on short no notice and also uh, Schlotzelbeck saving a big chance with more or less his shoulder getting it out, 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 out of goal. So it was in there for Leipzig, but with that win, it's another hard fought Dortmund win. With that win, Dortmund took the top of, of a table and knocked Leipzig more or less out of the 
title race. Um, didn't see much of the afternoon games, but the Augsburg win of Werder Bremen is basically one that kind of secures Augsburg from really getting dragged totally into the relegation uh, battle. Club back at home against Freiburg, nil nil. Freiburg kind of so and so. Big one for Schalke. And I said this was all about Thomas Reis, who uh, was at Bochum was then fired because he was already negotiating a potential takeover from Schalke. So there was a lot of ill will between those two. And, you know, the two towns are not that far apart, to say the least. Schalke get another win, and that must be a confidence booster. And they get rid of last place and hand it to Bochum. And it was just in the last one that I said, Bochum is actually quite good at home. And they have been. They have been actually quite ent 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 entertaining, but they're having hit now a rough patch where they lost four in a row. And suddenly they're in last place. And everyone expected Bochum to, to go down. There was a little bit of hope, but I think this might mean that Bochum is going down. Uh, Hoffheim also in serious re relegation trouble. Mainz again getting a home win. Only Berlin and Köln a nil-nil draw. Stuttgart against Bayern. You know, Stuttgart fought valiantly. And was really well in the game once Bayern had their opening attacking flurry. Um, where they had good chances in Bayern, were they were a better, 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 better team. But just when Stuttgart had like two really good chances with one where the Licht is just clearing it off the line. And then he scores on the other side a long range shot uh, where Mavropanos was kind of ducking out of the, of the way. And so the goalie sees it late. Otherwise, it would have been the flag probably gone, gone, gone in the other side. It was like, you re if you're a Stuttgart fan, a coach or a player, it was just, oh, this is Bayern. And then right after that, Müller assists Chupo Moting to get a, who just had uh, extended his contract, makes it 2-0. However, Stuttgart got back. And even though with a, uh, the goal came late through Perea, they really had their chance to equalize. It just did not come, unfortunately for them. Leverkusen, easy one over Hertha, and then a rather entertaining 2-2 between Wolfsburg and Frankfurt. Both coaches playing against the former clubs, which I think was an interesting dynamic, uh, and I have never seen Glasner so agitated. Of course, it happened at the same time as Liverpool against United, so my attention was a little bit out of but you know, I, I followed that one a little bit. Uh, Mamouche give Wolfsburg a lead. Uh, he was just a little bit not offside, and uh, Frankfurt quickly turned around. It was a very entertaining up and down game. Kulomiani had Tidin Dicker with a shot from far out. Gerhard gets an equalizer, and then the second half did not deliver for the first half promised. There was a goal from Kolomiani that was uh, give, not given because of an off offside in the build-up. But overall, Frankfurt then controlled the game, but Wolfsburg had the better chances. And so it ends in a 2-2 draw that no team really could uh, say whether this was good or bad for them, to be honest. And so we have the following standings. We have a title duel up top. 49 points, all Bayern and Dortmund. And what Dortmund... What's saving Dortmund is that they barely ever drop points. I think the the one draw, that's the one against Bayern, where they survived late on. So uh, that could be a big thing of science to come. However, Dortmund still have to go to Bayern and Bayern are the better team. So you would give still the advantage to Bayern, despite Dortmund being on such a great run. Uh, it is a scrap for the Champions spot. Union, Leipzig, Freiburg. I am not sure if Frankfurt can get in there. I think talent-wise, yes, but they have not been getting the results as of late. And I think it's also tied for the Conference League spot where Mainz may oust Wolfsburg. But yeah, God, God, see. But look at the bottom of the table. I think Augsburg now looks kind of safe. Köln also, I would say. And Bremen and Gladbach just about. But then... Hertha, Stuttgart, Hoffenheim, Schalke, Bochum. 2019-19-19. It is mad down there. Absolutely mad. I mean, at the moment, it's still the two Ruppert teams, Schalke and Bochum. But boy, is this a tight, tight, tight relegation battle. And that's what the Bundesliga is actually known for. Uh, as expected, it's still the four uh, blue teams that go on the, on, on the bomb with Hertha and Hoffenheim just surviving. But wait, wait for it. Schalke might actually get on a roll, and I would be so for it because the Bundesliga is a better, better one with Schalke in it. I would say even with uh, Bochum and Hertha, Hoffenheim can go on. on, on honestly, um, I personally wouldn't mind. I don't have much love for that club. 
upcoming games, I give you two weeks. We have actually um, a Schalke Dortmund, a big Ruppel Derby. Uh, come, 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 come up. We have Wolfsburg against Union Berlin. That might also be interesting. We have a Bavarian Derby between uh, Bayern and Augsburg. Um, so, yeah, there's quite some interesting stuff there. Le Leipzig, Gladbach, uh, you know, um, given that... Max Ebel now is at Leipzig when he was before at Gladbach. That could also hold a little bit of uh, tension there. And then we have Leverkusen against Bayern, which is always a hard game to call. Union against Frankfurt is also an interesting uh, one. So, um, you know, the Bundesliga will keep us entertained. In any case, I would like to know what you think about the situation in the, in the Bundesliga. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video and I'll surely talk to you soon next week, it will most, most likely be exclusively about Austria because we'll be going to the stadium. I'll make a, another full report. However, if I see that there's something in Bundesliga, I might add that on because, you know, I don't expect Lask to get anything big against Salzburg, but I'm ready to be surprised. In any case, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!